it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today, let's get into a video that so many people have asked me about, and it's about how to actually make labels. So when you're um, selling a product, to make it look professional is what you need to do because that's why people are going to buy it. So today, I'm going to take you right through how I actually measure up my jars to um, create the label, then how I go onto Canva and I create it, then from there, how I'm going to print it out onto my uh, printer and then back through to get it cut, like laser cut beautifully and professionally. And then that would be using uh, a Cricut machine or a Cricut machine, I'm pretty sure it's called. So that's what I do. And that's how I do all of my own labels. If you don't have a Cricut machine, do not worry. You can actually get around that by just cutting it yourself. But it definitely looks more professional and 100% suggest that you use one if you've got one or you can get your hands on one to borrow. So anyway, like I said, let's get going and we will make some labels similar to this. All right, so first things first, everyone. So of course we have our jar. Now there's a number of things that we want to know before we actually do our label. We need to know the weight of the product. So you would need to obviously make it and put it in the jar so that we would know what that is first. That is super important, but yeah, there's other things that you can do and save this onto your Canva account and then just change the weights as you change things. So let's go off that. So we're going to lay our jar down this way. I will actually uh, show you this way so you can see. Now, all we're going to do is we literally want to measure right around the jar because if you have a look at mine, it wraps right around the full jar. And you can see here, which is the little wrap over bit here. So what we're going to do here is we're literally just going to get a measuring tape and I'm doing this in centimetres because we are in Australia and we uh, work off centimetres here. So now this jar here says it's right on, you know, like 23 and a half. So we're going to write here 23.5 centimetres. That's what the width of the jar is. So we need to know that before we even start. So 23.5, which equals 9.5 inches if you're in the US and you want to know. And now we need to know also how tall we want it. Make sure you're not going to the edge and the edge because this dips down and it's round and it won't um, sit nicely on there. So I never go right to the edge. So with this one here, we're going to say this is, um, we could go probably six centimetres. So if you have a look at that, the six is here and here. So it's not going to hit the dip, which is really, really um, good. So we'll say six centimetres in height for this one here. And if I go on inches, that's about uh, 2.4 inches um, for this particular jar. So now that is the main part of the jar. And now what we want to do is, you know, if you want to have a round label on top, then we just want to measure what this is going to be. So in centimetres, I'd say about six centimetres. Um, so that is for the round part of the jar. So if we say, what did I say, six centimetres? So that's about 2.4 um, inches. So now we've got the jar, we've done the measurement. So now let's swap over and we'll go onto the computer and I'll show you how to do the rest. <laughs> everybody we are on canva so let's get started so this is my canva account that's on here so i'm going to show you how we start so with canva basically they have lots of templates but we don't want a template we want to make a custom designed one so that it's going to fit exactly on the jar so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to create a design click onto that one there and down the bottom it will say custom size so we're going to just write custom size and then make sure we click in the centimetres or inches, whichever one you're going to use. And remember that we've already measured the jar, so we know what it is. So we said 23 uh, centimetres in the width because it's going to go all the way around the jar. And then the height of the jar is going to be 5 centimetres. So now we're just going to push create new and it should do it all for us and set it all up. So this is exactly what it's going to do. So this uh, rectangle here is basically your whole design. 
On the side here, it's going to give you lots of ideas on what you can do. You could use any of those and change it. But I don't really do that, to be honest. I usually leave it white and then um, I put my design on it. If you start to put bright colours onto the back of this, it's going to cost you a lot more money uh, to um, you know, print it out because it's going to use a lot more ink and so on. So I try and generally keep it white. But if you want a colour then all you're going to do is click on that box and then this colour here is going to show you. So say you wanted pink, it's just going to do pink. But we will put it back to white because for today we're going to do white. So okay, the first thing I usually do with anything I'm going to do is just put the name in. So we're going to um, go over to text because we want to add a text in. We will go up to the top text. You can change um, this so you can see it's on Brittany because I actually use Brittany for my headings. But, you know, click on this box and you'll be able to use any of these other fonts that you want. One thing I do need to tell you is I do have a um, Canva Pro account. It costs me, uh, I think it's $17 a month. And I think that's US. So it's about 22 or something like that a month. Um, so, but I don't mind. I use it all the time and I really honestly think it is worth the money. So you can pay per year, which is cheaper, but I just pay per month because that way it's not a big chunk for me in one go. So anyway, like I said, we're going to make another body butter. So we're just going to delete that little bit because we want to just write whatever we want to write in it. So how about we will write orange patchouli and we will just pretend we're going to make an orange patchouli one. So now you've got your name in here and do remember too, you don't want the name to be too massive. So, you know, at the moment, the name is going to be like um, 35. So we've just made it to 35. So if you click on it, up here is telling you the numbers of what it's going to be. 35 is a pretty big print, but we can change that. So at the moment, I never worry about it. Now, I'm going to show you something that I love using. There's a few uh, really good things you can use. So if you click on this end box here, what it actually does is um, it's going to let you have like capital letters, underlining and so on. Or you can go into this box here and then you can actually space your letters. And this is what I do. So if you can see it spacing the letters um, or bringing them in, whichever you like. And if you space it a little bit, the good thing of what it actually does is it just allows the letters to pop a bit more. So I'm just going to pop them back a tiny bit. So play around with this however you want. And line spacing means if you had lots of words and you want to change that. So for now, we've already got that. So now the next thing we're going to do, um, and this is important as well. So depending on what country you're in will depend on what you have to write on your labels. So you've seen that I've just literally pushed text to get a new text. So over the side here, this is where you're going to get elements, which are pictures, text um, or uploads if you want to upload your own picture to put on it and so on. So we've just pushed text. So all I'm going to write here and I'm just going to put the caps lock on and I'm going to write Australian made. If you're in the UK, you, you know, you might write English made or, or made in the UK or, you know, made in the USA. American, uh, whatever you want, you know, if it's made in Africa, then, you know, write that on there. So because that is super important, people want to know where it's made. And then um, in Australia, you actually have to write what it is. So this one here is a body butter. So we're going to write body butter. And it doesn't need to be big. So and what we're going to do, I'm going to show you so you can see that I've hovered over the top to move it. And can you see that line in the middle? That means that that's directly in the center and that's what we want. So we'll go to this one and the same thing, we will center it. And if you can see that, can you see how it's across? That means that my letter is exactly in the middle. Um, so it's in the middle of the page and it's also in the middle this way and also this way, vertical and horizontal. So we know that that's perfect. That's where we want it to sit. And now what we're going to do is down the bottom here in the center is where you would put your grams. So I'm just going to once again go over here, click on text because we want another text in here. And then we're just going to center it and we will just say 100 grams because mine generally are 100 grams. Um, and so this is what this one's going to be. 
I don't want this particular text, so I'm going to just change this. I usually use Glacier Indifference. Um, it's just one that I personally like. Try and keep all your texts the same. So the top one, we want this also to be Glacier, which I didn't check before. So your top and bottom, you want the same. I suggest that you don't make the uh, grams or the top bit fancy. Um, try and keep that pretty much the same because the thing is, it's really important to keep those ones easy to read. Uh, orange patchouli doesn't matter and you can see I've accidentally clicked that so we'll just delete it. You can just delete any text or anything. So now we have the basis of what we're going to do. So we've done that and for me what I actually do is I love to use um, Canva's elements and the element means a picture and a picture says a thousand words, doesn't it? So for the start here, let's get into um, creating that. So if we go over to elements here, so click onto elements and in here, it's going to give you lots of different things that you could do. So I'll show you one thing. I won't be using this, but I'm going to show you in case you're using your own image. So say you're using your own image and we're going to click on this circle. You may want this circle, for instance, and we will just move this out the way so we can get into the circle. So say you want a circle here and you want to put your own picture. These frames mean that you can just slide your own picture in. So I'll go into my upgrades, up, uh, sorry, uploads. And with my uploads here, here's one of mine. So you just drag it and hold it over and there you go. It's in the circle. So then it can look super professional if you want that in there. But I don't want that. So we're going to just delete that out. And like I said, you can delete anything, slide it back into place and so on. So, but what we actually want to do for elements is today, I want to actually find something that suits orange patchouli. So in here, we're just going to type in orange patchouli and we will see what comes up. And any of these you can put in. So if you only want to look for photos, you just click on photos and only photos will come up. But I personally go to graphics most times. Um, so, and then all of these, we can click any of these into our design. So we'll see if we can find one. I do actually have an image that I usually use, um, but I don't know where it is exactly. So I will have to search for it. Anything that's moving, obviously it's not going to move on your picture, but it will still, um, it will just keep it flat. So rather than be a moving image, it's going to be a flat image. So hopefully um, that one does make a bit of sense. So let me just change this. I'm just going to write orange and we'll see. Uh, what comes up for me in orange. So say we wanted to use this. All we're going to do is click on it. It's going to bring it in here. And then we're just going to click on that and move it. So say you want, and this little button here is going to let you move it to the side, flip it around. You know, you might want it that way. And then you're going to slide it in. So if we're going to use this, for instance, all you're going to do is just drag it and play around um, you know, just to make sure that this is what you want. So we'll pretend this is what we're going to use for now. And what you can actually do is there's a thing called position. So up here, position means, do you want the orange in front of the letters? Do you want it behind the letters? So we're just going to make sure it's at the back. So it's backwards. But if I wanted that in front of the letters, I would push forward. And I'll show you now and you can see it's in front of the letters. But obviously we don't want that because we want to see it. So we'll push it backwards and that's it. So you're going to click onto anything, any letter, any image, anything, and you can push that position tool and bring it in. Another thing that's a really good tool, if you actually click onto the orange, then this little button here says transparency. And what you can do is you can make it lighter or you can make it darker, which is really good if you want your letters to show up more. So if we just do that, I mean, look how really, really cute that actually does look. So now we've got one image. You might want to put some other images in next to it as well and make sure they kind of all work in together. You can put whatever you would like, but say we want this in. All we're going to do is like you can see that I've just clicked on this. And let me just go back into my little um, image. We'll just move that out the way. Sometimes you have to move things out the way. He came with it, so we're just going to delete that bit. Sometimes images will have like three sections to an image, so you have to delete them. So now you can see that these are the leaves, and 
if you know you could move these however you want so if i wanted these to be a part of this basically this is all i'm going to do if you want them to go at the back once again we we'll click on it push position and we'll make them go backwards and now you can see that they are hiding kind of behind um, the orange so if you wanted it to look like that that's exactly what you would do but we don't really want that one do we i think it looks a bit funny so we're just going to stick with the orange for now but i will actually um change this to suit me later and like i said if you're moving anything just put it back into the position that you know you want it in um, and it's really as simple as that so that is the main part of your image so you know obviously from here you know we want to make sure that we've you know one got the name of the product two got where it's made and what it is three uh, we've checked the grams and we know what the grams is now if you want to do like a batch number or something like that on the side and of course ingredients what I actually do is I type it in here and then I'm going to spin it around so I'll show you what I do for that but before we finish doing this just make sure that you've got everything the way you want it and remember that the thing they're going to see is that center the rest of it's going to wrap around the back but pretend, you know, your company is an orange color. I'm going to just give you a few little things that, you know, you could actually do if you wanted to do. So for me, I just add like little strikes of color. So if you can see this, you know, you may want this kind of to be on an angle uh, like this, you know. Um, and so you can change this. Just click on that and you can change it and it's all orange. Um, or, you know, you can put in another color and of course this one's a different color as well. So then you've got something that stands out a little bit. You could put it wherever you want, move it around. Um, you know, we can turn it on an angle if we want um, or, you know, sort of move it this way here. So if you wanted something like that, then that's all you're going to do. We will just lighten it up a bit. And you can see that that's just added a little bit of depth you know to um you know your thing so you can add anything whether it's this one here this little kidney shaped one i've just popped on here as well although i have to move that because it's too big you know the same thing you know you may want to put this here in the background or something like that just to make it look you know give it a little bit of depth like i said but always lighten it so your words can go over the top so how about we will just get rid of this one and I'm just doing this so that I can show you how you can do make something like look really, really professional. Um, so we've got oranges here. So maybe this one will just keep this an orangey color. So you can see how already I grabbed one and I've just changed it to suit myself. You can make it bigger or smaller. And so if we make it like that, it's literally going to just kind of sit this uh, way. So then like i said we know what we're going to do don't we will pop this one back in the center now so the main thing that you want to do um depending on what country you are of course you're going to have to do something really important and the thing that's important is writing your ingredients your batch numbers directions and things like that so i'm going to do a basic one for me and then you can go from there choose where you want your label to go as well so if you've got your logo uh, so in my logos here i've actually got my logo saved down here so these are all ones that i might have used um, and so in here we're just going to go back in here and you will see some pictures of other people and those people's items are going to be in the um conference letter so that's why that's it so now you can see here that i do have my logo and you can see how it's white and we want to get rid of that so we're just clicking on that and then what we're going to do is go up to edit image so click on to edit image we're going to push on this bg remover that means it will remove the background of the image only that i've clicked on so let it do its little thing for a bit and now you can see it has removed the background and all there is is my logo on the top so that's something simple that you can do and we'll just make it smaller because we don't need it to be super big you can put your logo wherever you want in the middle to the side um, it doesn't matter it's up to you whatever you want um, 
me personally, I just think that people don't want to see my massive logo in the middle. They usually want to see the design. So that's why I pop mine to the side. So now let's go and do the directions. So we're going to go back into text, go into the small text. And at the moment, this is 12. I usually keep mine at around 10. Um, in Australia, I think the smallest you're allowed to go is six. Uh, I can't remember, but um, you know. So anyway, all we're going to do in here now is we're going to write on it. So we will just write directions. So let me just go back into this one here. I'm just going to go backwards a little bit. We'll just delete, go back. So I'm just going to get rid of all of that. We'll go over the top. Now, so we're going to write in here directions. Um, when I'm doing anything like this, I usually keep the caps on because it's easy for people to read as well. So, and I'll show you what we're going to do because after we do it, we will turn it around. So we're just going to write, um, you know, apply a small amount, write whatever you think um, you want to write on yours. Um, so this is for body butter, remember. So we're just going to say apply a small amount to the skin and massage in. So that's what we're going to do. So if that's all you're going to do, um, then that's all you're going to do. And we're going to leave it at that. Okay, so that is your directions. Under this, I usually write things like, you know, we always advise that you, um, you know, test a small amount prior and blah blah but you don't need to put all of that on there so now underneath this you may want to have a batch number I, that's what i put on mine so that is my batch number we'll pretend this is the batch number here actually let me write a real one in just in case so we're going to say um what's our batch number going to be so it's going to be um two zero two two one 26 I think I'm up to at the moment so that's what I'm going to put in and this is my batch number we're going to make sure that this comes back to using Glacier Indifference like I said try and keep everything the same and we'll stretch this out so now what I'm going to do is turn it so if you turn it sideways it just looks much better to 90 degrees is what we want we will click back in here so say we want it in here now we're just going to shrink it down so it fits if it's too small, then we are going to have to just make it bigger. It's fine. It's 8.6, which is fine to pop that in and then just move it. Usually I move it kind of to the end. Leave a bit of a gap here for the, um, so that way when you're changing it over. So like I said, when you're wrapping it, you've got that. So now you can see how that looks really professional at that end. And then it will give you a chance if you might say, well, okay, I want my orange to be bigger. I want it to go over. I want some spots on it or whatever you want. But from here, this one looks super professional. I'm sure you can agree it looks really professional. So that is one end, okay, what we're going to do. Now, the other end is usually when I write the ingredients and the manufacturing. So that is super important. So now, once again, we are going to go back into um, the text. We're going to put our small text in. We'll change this to Glacier Indifference. And I'm going to just move this over here so that we can see what we're doing. And we'll just get rid of all of their text. I know I can go over the top, but, you know, I'm being a bit lazy, aren't I? So now we've done the first bit, the directions. Um, so now in here, we're going to write ingredients, although I did it wrong. So let me just change ingredient. I -E -N. And of course, check all your spelling. I will check the spelling before we print anything. Um, so ingredients, then we're going to write what is in um, our product. So we'll write um, shea butter. I'm actually going to put my glasses on everyone because I'm doing this without glasses and I'm thinking I can barely see. <laughs> Lucky I've done it so many times and I know what I'm doing. So uh, like I said, so we've got Ashea butter. I know there's cocoa butter. Make sure that you are writing it in. Um, we did that wrong, didn't I? I spelt it wrong. Make sure too that you are actually writing this in sequence. So in Australia, you're meant to write the ingredients that you have the most of at the front and the least of at the end. So that's what we're going to write in this one. Coconut oil. Mine has a very, very small portion of coconut oil. That's why my coconut oil is at the bottom. 
So then we're going to write apricot kernel oil because that is also in it. Um, I have fragrance oil. So tapioca starch, that is also in mine. Um, mica, because sometimes I put mica in it. And there is vitamin E. So now, so you can write more or less whatever you need to write. So we've got that bit in it. We are going to change this, of course, because it is too large. We want to keep this to the same roughly as the other one. So we'll say roughly that. I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit. Now, down the bottom, you can see these little arrows. And these arrows are what's going to help you turn it around. So usually what I do is try and keep all the writing the same. Um, you know, you can change it to have it that you can have it facing each other or the opposite. But it's a really whatever you want to do. So we'll just move that out the way. So in here, I've got this bit here. So now we're going to go, yep, that looks fine. You can make this smaller or bigger. Um, just whatever you prefer. So uh, that's 7.8, which is really easy to read on something like this. It's fine. And you can just use your arrows to move it up and down. So now we have got, like I said, we've got our ingredients. We know we want the ingredients into this bit here. And now the next bit that we're going to be doing is we need to write the manufacturing details. So on here, once again, go back into your text. And um, we're going to write in here. So I'm just going to move this bit here. So let me just, we're going to write in here. There's many, many things that you need, like warnings and things like that. You can put your warnings at the bottom of the jars, if you like. So um, you don't need to try and force them all into this one bit. Usually I would say a warning pop on the bottom of, um, you know, your product in a circle. And you can also make that on Canva. And we will be doing a circle in a minute. I'll load all of these together. It will be a long video. But I'll actually show you how to do it. It's basically the same process, exactly the same. Um, but the only difference is you can use a part template to do it. So like I said, in this bit here, we're going to write manufactured. So manufactured by, and then of course I write Nelson Sopery. And then you need to write the address. Now, everybody, uh, the one thing that I do have to tell everybody as well, it is really important to write all these details in. A lot of people say to me, well, I don't want people knowing my address. Well, if I want to be honest, um, that's just a part of making something. You have to do that. You can't not put your address. So please put your address if your law says you need to. So now our manufacturing details are here. They don't need to be as big as the others as well. So, you know, you can make them however you like. And just make sure that, you know, you're making it look nice as well because you want it to look good. So now there's my manufacturing details. They're in there and they're all looking good. And if you have a look, the manufacturing, I always put lighter and then the ingredients darker so that there is a, you know, a bit of a gap between those two. And don't worry because the writing's here and all this is here. Because honestly, you, they're not going to see that. You're going to remove that anyway. Uh, that's going to be, sorry, not remove it. That's going to be wrapped around the back. So, um, yeah, you can change it however you like. And then usually I just, you know, have my, my labels on it, my logos on it, but just away from everything else because um, it doesn't need to be shown in, in big um, anywhere. But anyway, if you were doing an orange one, this is literally all you need to do. For me, usually, you know, I kind of add like colours in it and so on because um, my colours are pink. So usually where this orange is here, this would be a pink logo. So like I said, for now, we're pretty much done everything that we're going to do on here. So all we're going to do now is we want to save it. So we're just going to push um, here, for instance. We'll pretend we're going to do this. I'm not actually going to save this one yet. And then we're going to just download it. So if you keep going down to the bottom, it will say download. And then you just save it to your computer on whatever file you want. 
So that's as simple as that. Once we have saved this, then we're going to go to the next step and the next step would be um, printing it and then, you know, going off um, onto our um, computer and our, and of course, sorry, the Cricut machine. So for now, I'm going to stop the video. I will start a new one and I'll attach them all together and then I will show you how I print it all out. All right, everyone. So now let's get on to the round sticker, which we're going to go on the top. So all I've done is I've gone into Canva and then I've actually written sticker. So let me get out of this so I can show you. Um, so we'll go back to the start just so that it's easy for you guys just to um, learn. So at the start here, all we're going to do is if you just literally type in sticker um, and then it will come up and then just write um, just down the bottom, it will say circle sticker. We're going to say yes because that's what we want. So this is easier to use a template that they've already got here. It's really, really simple. So that's usually what I will do. So all we're going to do is we will just go for this one here, this grape job one, for instance, and then we're going to just change it. So you can use any one. It's easier just to use theirs. And so all I'm going to do here is we just want to go and get rid of most of this sticker. So like the green bit here, if you can see that, I'm just going to literally get rid of that. And all you need to do rather than getting rid of everything is you can just you know, change the whole thing, take it off, whatever. So we're just going to delete it off and then we've got our sticker here so that we know what it's going to be. Then if we go back to elements, and this is what we were talking about earlier, the easiest thing to do is just pop this one in here. So I've just pushed circle and now we're just going to make sure the circle fits in. So just bring it to the outside and then there is the circle. So the best thing that I do, which, so now with, this is the background. So I'm going to just uh, show you something. So in the background, if we just push blue, um, we'll push pink, um, for instance. Oh, hold on, I've made something a boo-boo. Let me just fix this. So in the background here, so this is the background. We'll just make it pink. This is the easiest way to fix something on Cricut because I'll show you later and it's not going to be pink at all. So now in the middle of our circle, remember we're just going to pull the circle back in here again. And now for this circle, we're just going to make the circle white because that's usually what we want. The thing when you're using a Cricut machine too, sometimes it can be a bit tricky and not cut perfectly. The best advice I can give you is don't make the inner circle colourful. Keep it white or transparent. It's much easier. So that's what I do. So and this pink bit, we're going to remove that later. So we don't need, but then the good thing about putting the pink on the outside is it actually will just give you a bit of a template and you can see the circle exactly how you want it. So now I want one for my orange patchouli because that's the one that we've just done. If you have a look here, it will say recently used and this is in the element still. So if we go over to that, I can see this is one that I used. I actually changed the orange um, in between talking to you all before. I just thought, look, let's just change it all. So all we're going to do for this bit here is I'm literally just going to move it however I want. And you can resize it. And, you know, it doesn't matter. Like whatever you like, whatever you think is how you want your design to look. But we might make this one a little smaller. Um, we'll just leave it like that. And that, you know, like move it wherever you want. This one doesn't have to be centered. Um, and I'm going to just move it on an angle because that way it can easily fit my text in much better. So now we're going to just do um, a text on this one, aren't we? So I'm going to want to just use a basic one at the start. So once again, we're going to text. Um, we're just going to write, um, we'll just type in body butter and I'm going to change it to keep it the same as the glacier. It definitely looks more professional if they're all the same. Now this is going to be at the top. Now because this is a circle it would look a bit strange if we just left it, um, you know, like if, if I just left this to be straight it, it may not look very nice but there's things that you can actually do. So we'll just click off it. Click back onto, um, you know, the one that we want to use. We're going to click onto all of these, do different things. So, of course, we don't want that bit. We'll go over here and we're going to have a look. So, now, we've clicked onto this. We've clicked onto effects and now you can see effects on here as well. So, now, all we do is push curve. 
and you can see that the curve has actually you know let it do so we're just going to enlarge it however you want you can say okay you want it to be this or you don't want it to be that and you can change the curve so it doesn't have to be as round so you might just want it smaller obviously that wording is too big so we're going to just change this a little bit in here and then this is when you would play with this to say do you want it really round you, you know do you not want it so round and so on so and then we're just going to click back onto this and you can see that it's made body butter sit in here but it is quite a big one so I'm going to just change that because I definitely do not want it um, that big and then what you can do is space out the letters so it looks a bit better so we'll just space these out a tiny bit and we're going to and then you can see that looks much much better and then like I said once again go back into effects and just have a bit of a look on the curve you can you know make your curve wider or bigger if you want so I'm going to just spread it out a little bit so now I know that looks really good I'm happy with that and so next I'm just going to put in my grams you don't have to do all this you could literally just have your picture at the top if that's all you want to do and I'm going to just make my picture bigger because I think it will fit in here and I always just spend some time moving it around to, to see where I like it to sit like it doesn't have to sit a certain way everybody so now once again I'm going to just go back into here so now I'm going to do is going to the same text um, as I said it just makes it look really uniform if you keep to the same text so in this text I'm just going to write what it is which is orange patchouli so let me just go over this and I will just write that in so now we've got orange patchouli We'll just make that a bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing. Pop it down the bottom. Once again, we're going to go back into effects and then we are going to go onto the curve. Now you can see the curve's gone the wrong way. So just get the arrow and make it go that way. It's real. Look, I know that when I'm doing this, you're probably thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, that is so much work. Look, honestly, uh, it is. But as you get better and better at it, you, you start to realize it's actually not that hard. It's just a bit of learning on your program, like anything, you know, it really is a bit of learning. Um, so that's the one thing I'll say is, you know, just, just try and um, play around and just, you know, make sure that it's what you like and you, you're happy with it and so on. So that, that's all I do with mine. Um, but, you know, don't be too precious about it. Just have a play and see that you like it again as well. And remember what I said before about having... Um, you know making sure it's centered and that little purple line that will come up in the middle um so yeah you can definitely um do that so don't worry about that so now we're pretty happy with that the only thing is i will just play around a little bit more um just with the curve because the curve is not perfect um, and that's only because if you can see the circle, it's trying to tell you this is your circle. So if you're just holding down, um, I'm holding down the left part of the computer um, mouse and then just moving my finger along because I'm on um, a laptop and then you can make your, sm your circle smaller or bigger, however you want. And then that will actually help it sit centered and, and sit much nicer. So that one's looking much nicer now. And so now all you need to do if you want to is you can put on your grams on it or not. But uh, generally, you know, if it was many other things, I wouldn't. Usually what I do is I put my picture in here. Um, so we'll just move that a bit. And then here I usually put Nelson Sober. I just put my name. It, it doesn't have to be big. Just keep it small. Um, this one here, we might just try and fix this so that it's um, similar to the other one and then I will figure um, that out in a minute and then once again in text we'll just go over it and I'm just going to put my website I just write my website in it and the reason you're going to do this is if somebody ever loses the box that you put it in or anything they can go oh that's where I bought it from I love that I'm going to go back and get more so that's kind of why you do these things as well um, I know you probably go oh I can't be bothered but um, there are real good reasons why you do this. There really is. So, um, you know, it's all about thinking about later on, will they come back? Do they want to buy more? 
um, because a lot of times people might love your stuff, but if they can't find it, again, they just go off and get it. They just give up. They just really can't be bothered. So that's what I suggest to, you know, really just try and make sure that you're doing your best so that you're making it really easy for the customer to return. That I mean, that's really what it's all about, isn't it? You know, we want them to return and you kind of got to think, well, how can I get them to return? What's the easiest way to get them to return? So you can see how I'm just playing around with fitting this in um, and that's literally all you've got to do. So, you know, that might look better and then it gives me room here if I want to write 100 grams. So I'm just going to write 100 grams and then that's pretty much it. And once again, like I said, I'm going to change it back to make sure it is the right, um, you know, right font. So I've got this one up. Let me just move this one a little bit. All right. So there, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? And I think I'm happy with that. So except for I'm just going to move my little picture. So you can use the arrow if you just want to move it up a tiny bit. And now, so I'm going to show you something, everybody, when I actually do this. So this is the bit, like I said, where we've got everything here. We know this is what we're going to do. So now we're just going to go to share. And what we want to do is go down the bottom, so we want to download it. So there's a little button here that says transparent background. So if you click on this, it is going to get rid of the pink. And when you go into Canva, it's much easier to cut it. So now what we're going to do is I'll say download and we will wait for it to download and I'll actually show you what I'm doing. So now it's going to come up on here. So this is what it's going to look like. You can see all the backgrounds being removed and it's just going to cut a circle. So then we're just going to say save as and I'm going to put it in where I put the other one as well. So I'll say, uh, we'll just type it in, orange patchouli. So you're saving this to your computer um, and then I'll just write round. So I know it's round. That's it. So I'm going to save it. That's done and we have saved it. And this is what it's going to look like on top um, so doesn't that look amazing? So it's going to look really, really good. So anyway, now we have done that and I know you're going to think, oh my goodness, this is so much work and it is, but if you're going to keep the same line the whole time, it's going to make this so much easier for you and all you can do is keep it and then each time you need the sticker, just print it back out again rather than having to go, well, how many do I need to order? I've ordered too much or not enough. This way you can just, if you make only six, just print six out that's it and it's not that expensive so like I said we've done that bit haven't we so let's go and do the next bit and if you're wondering about paper you can use your plain um, sticky paper to print on or you can use printable vinyl which is what I usually use but at the moment I'm out of that so we're going to print it on my printable sticky paper which you can also use it's much cheaper um, but like I said, we will print on those and I'll show you. So let's get everything organized and I'll turn on my Cricut machine and your Cricut machine will need to be plugged into a PowerPoint and the mach and you will also need to plug in the cable into your computer. So I'll do that and now let's get on to the next bit. All right, everyone. So now we're up to the next bit. We are on Cricut. So this is the front page. This is my front page. So it will show all different designs I've already made. So now um, this is actually called just your design, um, you know, your design space. So it's just basically where you're going to make something. So on here, now we're going to click new project. And now we're in the screen. So this basically just means, you know, the mat or, you know, the paper that you're going to print on. So we need to upload something because remember we made something. So we're going to just go upload and then upload. These ones here mean all the ones I've already uploaded, but we don't want those. We need a new one because we just made this one. So we're going to press browse. This will go into my computer and it's going to um, have a look at everything. So I want to just make sure that I actually find it in here. So let's just go in here and have a bit of a look and we will try and um, find it all in here. So let me just have a quick squiz and I know I definitely saved it in here. So I'll have to have a look, but I have lots of things in here. So this is the first one, remember? So we're going to push complex. Complex means it's going to do exactly as you say. If I push simple, 
if you see how it takes the colors and everything away moderate means it's medium but it's not high tech and complex means exactly as we put it so that's the one we want and push continue and you do that for anything you're going to do so this one here means automatic we can remove the background but we don't need to do that we've already done it pretty um all right so we're just going to say apply and continue we want it exactly as we've made it and now this one means if you're just going to cut it but it's just going to turn out like that so we want print and cut which this means it's going to go to the printer and then from there we're going to um cut it through the cre cut so basically this is really simple this bit here so you're just going to say upload which means it's going to upload into the design space that we actually want it to do so it will just take a little a few minutes because today is the weekend and my internet is a little bit slow all right so it has uploaded after all this time so now we're just going to literally click onto the uh, one that's uploaded going to say add to canvas so now this has definitely added to our canvas so here it is here and now what we need to do is we need to make sure that we refix this because we need the measurements at the top to say what it's meant to be so in the top here i'm just going to change this one so remember we already organized the width of what it should be so let me just double check the width and um, then basically we just want to re-put this back in here and this is the one thing I love about Canva uh, about Canva in conjunction with this so with Cut, of course so now we said 23 didn't we so approximately 23 or 23.5 so we're just going to do that we'll push enter and it's going to do a fix it for me and so then it's going to say here that it's six centimeters in height so we'll just go back and write 23.5 because that should make it around the six um, so now you can see it's like 5.11 which is fine um, so you don't need to worry basically we just want the width is more important than anything else so we've got that so this is we know that this is going to be okay to print it and um, get everything ready now one thing you will know as well is that like basically if you go to um, that if the measurements are too big it won't actually let you do it it will come up with a little orange star in the corner and it means you need to make it smaller so I've had to make it 23.4 otherwise it would not let me print this out so now that we've done that one we've got this one on there and now at the same time we will put the circle one that we did as well so let's just add that one on here too so the same thing we're going to just push upload and we're going to go back and browse in here and I know that we definitely left it in here so this is the one here um, this one I had actually changed it and left the background so I'm going to show you how to remove that so once again we're pushing complex now we're just going to tap our fingers um, or the or the mouse on the pink and you can see how it removed it to make it the circle push apply and you can see this is what's happening we want to print this don't we so we're just going to say yep okay that's all good we'll click on this again we're going to put it in so like I said we're just going to add it all in and now we need to just make sure we bring the size back to the size we actually want so the size for this one should be uh, six so you just click on the image and then just click on the top where it says your width and I'm just going to make sure that we're saying this is going to be six We need to get it back again now, don't I? So let me just go back in here. So we want it to be six centimeters, enter, and that's what it is. So that is perfect. So now what we can do is we can actually print this. So all we're going to do to do this is just literally go into um, printing it. So it's it's really not that hard. It's nice and easy. So hopefully um, that explains it all so like I said we've got everything on here it's saying we're going to print it and then um, we're going to cut it so we're just going to push that I'm working with my internet so that's why it's a little bit trickier so on here you can see this is what it's going to do and it's going to print it out on the printer so now we just need to put all the paper in the printer so let me organize that and 
then it's literally going to be printing. So I will do this bit here and um, then I'll show you the next bit. And so this is simply printing it. So let's go. So now what you've got to do is we have everything onto, basically it's going to go onto a mat and then from the mat we're going to pop it through to um, the printer. So all we're going to do is just write print. We're going to say send to print. And then we are going to undo the little green button and that way it will go through super duper smooth. And um, that's it. So we already know this is printed onto, you know, like I said, onto our printer. So let me just get out of that. So we're going to turn this to a vinyl or a paper, whichever one, because we want to set the machine up. So the machine is all set up. It's all ready to go. And then literally all we're going to do is say, make it. Um, it's as simple as that. My machine is already clicking and I'll show you the next bit. So I'll just have to film the next bit and then it will come to that bit. All right, I had to swap devices to show you because the other one's obviously on the computer screen. So here you go. I have popped it onto the mat. So this is the mat that we're using. And now we're just going to pop it through uh, the machine. So I'm just going to pop it through to show you. So this is the machine here. So it's all open. It's ready to go. And when this button flashes, that means you need to insert um, the little um, paper. So, you know, like this board that it's on. So here is the board. And excuse this disgusting board. This is the one I don't use, but it's the only one I could find just for this. So now we're going to click it in here. And then this little one here, we are going to push this button. And it's going to make sure it's all in. So let me just quickly do so now it's ready to go. So we are just going to get this button here. Click this. This means it's going to take it in and it's going to start to cut it. So what it's doing now is it's just checking the line. The reason it actually draws this black line around the outside is so that the machine can actually um, know exactly where it's going to cut. So I hope this has been helpful because as I said, this has been a bit of a tricky video to do, being part on the um, computer, part on my laptop and part on, um, you know, filming through the phone. So it's, it's been a tricky video, but I think this will be very helpful for lots of you to um, see. So now it is getting ready to cut it. And I think after this, I'll have to throw my green board in the bin because it's really uh, just gross. And they have a sticky um, thing on them, so the paper sticks. So they get really dirty and ruined. If you drop it on the ground, it gets bits on it and then it's no good, which I do have three more boards. So this one will have to just go in the bin, I think. But this will be good for this process. So it's showing you that it has actually cut around the edge, if you can see that being cut. And it has also cut around there. So all we're going to do now is we will just push this open. This is going to release it from here. Now we're going to go over to the other side. I'll get the jar and we'll pop it on the jar. All right, everyone, the exciting bit has happened. We are ready to do this. So we're just going to take our paper off the board. And then on here, we'll be able to peel that off. But for now, we've got our jar. So usually, if you've been making body butter or something, wipe your jar with alcohol just to make sure there's nothing left on it at all. And this is only paper. But if you can only afford the paper, just put contact over the top. Or you can sell them the way they are. It doesn't really matter. But I usually use um, vinyl. So now all we're going to do, and hopefully I've got nice and close, is um, we're just going to go around the jar and you've got to hope that we're straight and uh, not messy. Sometimes it's messy. That's what vinyl's good for. You can just remove it off. And it's not too bad, is it? It's pretty all right. So then this is the jar. We have now made this label. And look how professional the label actually does look. I hope you agree. I think it looks great. And now for the top here, we're going to take off this one off here of course this is just our little round sticker 
And these sheets, I get them from Stanley Packaging. They work out to be about five cents a sheet, so they're really cheap. Whereas vinyl is $2.20 a sheet, so a lot more. So there's the top of them. We've got our little top here. So this is what I do. I just pop it on the top and then look how professional that looks. So we've got our jar that is ready for everything to go inside when it's all ready. Um, let me take this one out. And so that is inside the jar. Obviously, I haven't made it yet. And, um, and then when somebody gets it, they're going to get this gorgeous, gorgeous jar. So I really hope this has been super, super helpful for everybody. It's been a long video to make, and I'm sure it's going to be a hugely long video for you all to watch. So thank you, everybody, for watching this long, and I hope that Canva, Cricut, and um, lots of your creativity um, are going to go hand in hand with just a basic computer to make some really, really fantastic um, labels because these ones are really hard to get and very expensive to make. So if you look at this, um, if you we made this one, so if you look at it, honestly, it's probably going to cost you maybe uh, with everything, I'd say 10 cents for the bottom one and, and maybe 10 cents for the top. So that's all it's going to cost you to make. But if you bought them, it'd be about three or four dollars. So um, that's the difference, isn't it? It's just, you know, it works out really well sometimes if you can do it yourself. I know it's time consuming, but this video was time consuming because there's lots of things I had to do. But once you get fast, you'll be really, really good at it. If you think this video is worthy of a thumbs up, make sure you give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely amazing. And then I can see how much you love it. And I can, of course, um, create better content. If you would love to go over to our Patreon, just go over there and see what we're up to. But otherwise, I will see you on the next YouTube video. Bye, everyone.